Before leaving, please remember to make a contribution to all of my uh, thousands of hours of work uh, uh, here, uh, PayPal, Patreon, or fundraiser in the description below or on the China Rising Radio Sino Land art article page. Thank you. Chinese film, culture, and history series, Confucius, directed by Hu Mei, 2010, with English subtitles, as explained by Dr. Chuan Le on China Rising Radio Sino Land. Pictured above, outtake from the outstanding, eponymous, full-length feature movie on the life and times of Confucius. Note before starting, download the English subtitled movie for free below. The two-hour Chinese movie Confucius was released in 2010 and directed by Hu Mei. The well-known actor in the star role was Chao Yuan Fat. Pictured above, director Hu Mei on the left and actor Chao Yuan Fat on the right. Let's get started. The segment I wish to highlight is 23 minutes long, from 1 hour 19 minutes to 1 hour 42 minutes 20 seconds. I call it From the Scandalous Princess to Eternity. First scene, the strange meeting of two distant cousins from 1 hour and 19 minutes to 1 hour 27 minutes and 20 seconds. Confucius and Princess Nanzi of the Song Principality were both scions of the Shang Yin Royal House, which lasted from 1600 BCE to 1046 BCE. Pictured above, map of the Zhou Dynasty in which Confucius lived. When the Royal House of Zhou, which lasted from 1046 BC to 256 BCE, was granted the Mandate of Heaven, the conquered Shang Yin Dynasty was given the Principality of Song, south of Lu, L-U, where Confucius was born, so they can keep on offering sacrifices to their ancestors. Zhong Si was the second Duke of Song. Some generations later, in 710 BCE, his offspring, Kong Fujia, was murdered by Huadu, a powerful nobleman coveting Kong's wife, and probably something more. His son, Kong Mu Jin Fu, fled to the Principality of Lu and was granted a rank of officer. Mu Jin Fu begat Gao Yifu, Gao Yifu begat Fang Shu, Fang Shu begat Bo Xia, Bo Xia begat Shu Liang He. Born 1614 BCE, died 548 BCE. Xu Liang He begat Xiu. Born 551 BCE, died 479 BCE. AKA also known as Confucius, AKA Kong Qiu, AKA Zhong Ni, AKA Kong Fu Zi. The interview happened in 496 BCE, a year after Confucius was exiled from the Principality of Lu. Confucius was living in Wei, W-E-I, a rich principality west of Lu, with Yan uh, Zhuoji, the brother-in-law of his disciple Zilu, a.k.a. Zhongyo, born 542 BCE, died 480 BCE. Pictured above, Princess Nanzi is such an infamous historical figure that even on the Chinese internet, I could not find, I could find no old paintings or statues of her. Above is the movie poster where you can see actress Xuan Zhou portray, portraying the princess. Here I would like to introduce some remarks concerning Chinese names of that time. Let's take the example of Confucius's grandson. His name is Kong family name, followed by his given name, Ji, thus Kong Ji, born 483 BCE, died 402 BCE. However, his social name is Zi Si. The element Zi, Z-I, means master, not given here in the sense of the philosopher, like Confucius in Kong Zi, but as the indicator of his social status. All persons belonging to the gentry and the nobility were called uh, by 
their social name in polite society. The given name is only used by his parents or a superior occasionally. The family name is always used together with the rank or honorific title, example, Kong Da Fu, the Grand Officer or Minister Kong, or Kong Fu Zi, Noble Master Kong. So Princess Nan Zi's social name means Mistress Nan. Nan Zi's flirtatious attitude to her distant cousin is revealing her extravagant personality, also expressed by her dazzling outfit. She has been given to Duke Ling of Wei, reigned from 534 BCE to 492 BCE, but finding the old man not satisfactory, she asked her brother and lover, Zichao, to come to Wei. Both were having an affair in broad daylight. The old enamored and forgiving Duke Ling was perfectly aware of the situation. In the capital city of Wei, a jingle was sung, the handsome swine of song and the lascivious sow of song are having fun together under the nose of our Lord. Chinese public opinion has a very ancient pedigree, but Nan Zhe was not an average incestuous hypersexual woman. She had brains and was quite an advisor behind the throne and on the throne. Historians say she was a capable leader. Therefore, with her husband being quite indifferent to the duties of a ruler, he was happy to have such a priceless wife. As well, she was capable of philosophical understanding, too. Accepting her defeat and not being able to woo Confucius, she gave him a deep bow. Unfortunately for her, the nobleman in Wei decided to put an end to her life and director Hu Mei imagined that her last thoughts were for Confucius. In parentheses, here I would like to express a certain ironic, even sarcastic doubt. Director Hu took some liberties with historical facts. End of parentheses. Nanzo was not the victim of an occult assassination conspiracy, but has been officially executed, so to speak. Nanzo died in 480 BCE, 16 years after the interview and 12 years after her easygoing husband. She offered the throne to her son, Prince Ying, but knowing his mother, he wisely refused, and Nanzo chose a grandson of Duke Ling, Prince Zhe, and enthroned him as Duke Chu, first reign 492 BCE to 480 BCE, and second reign 477 BCE to 470 BCE. In 480 BCE, her stepson, Prince Kui Kui, father of Duke Chu, who had been rejected at the death of Duke Ling because Nan Zhe did not appreciate him, returned with foreign aid to dethrone his son, Duke Chu, and on the same occasion executed Nan Zhe, his overbearing but extremely talented stepmother. <laughs> Prince Kui Kui had a short reign as Duke Zhuang II of Wei reigned 480 BCE to 478 BCE. Please note that Nan Zhe's distant cousin Confucius will die at 72 the next year in 479 BCE. The sage was informed about all the events of this outlandish family melodrama, which broke his heart. Let's not forget his disciple Zhe Lu, born 542 BCE, died set 480 BCE, who was killed during a battle related to this internecine fight. Pictured above, an old painting of Confucian disciple Zulu. Second scene, with many sub-scenes, entitled Tribulations A and B and C, from 1 hour and 28 minutes to 1 hour and 38 minutes. First, Confucius wandered for 14 years, 497 BCE to 484 BCE, from one principality to the next, in the quest for a prince capable to be guided by principles and affairs of state. Tribulation A, from 1 hour and 28 minutes to 1 hour and 29 minutes, 20 seconds, the philosopher king without a crown was giving a lesson while minions of commander Huan Tui of Song were chopping a tree just in front of him for intimidation purposes. A short line from Confucius's Analects, uh, Luen Yi, 
which means Selected Sayings, Chapter 7, Section 23, attest to this episode. Heaven has engendered virtue in me. What can Juan Tui do to me? Tribulation B, from 1 hour and 29 minutes and 21 seconds to 1 hour and 30 minutes, 20 seconds. Some Taoist recluses were mocking Confucius for his lofty ideals and his quest for the noble prince. They tried in vain to coax Zilu to stay with them. Tribulation C, from 1 hour 30 minutes and 20 seconds to 1 hour and 38 minutes. The movie mentions 484 BC at 1 hour 30 minutes and 20 seconds, but I would say that for the sake of artistic tension and rhythm, Director Hu chose to compress in 12 minutes events happening between 492 BCE and 484 BCE, which is perfectly her right as an artist. I will not go into the details, but will focus on two topics. The conversation with his disciples in which they said they found him because a farmer told them that near the East Gate is a man looking important, having the forehead of Yao mythical emperor of ruling China more than 2,000 years before Confucius, the shoulders of Zichan, a virtuous nobleman, but scraggy as a stray dog. This line is famous in China and within the Sinosphere. Pictured above, the great and noble Zichan. Zichan, birth name Jiqiao, died 496 BCE, so he died the year of the interview between Nanzi and Confucius. He was a grandson of Duke Mu of Zheng, reigned 627 BCE to 606 BCE. Zheng was a state southwest of Wei. In dangerous times, Zichan was able to defend the sovereignty of the state of Zheng against two larger powers. He also managed to save the ducal house from internal quarrels, he curbed the powerful families and saved the central government by a series of legal reforms, which he successfully enforced. So Chan had the new law code cast into a bronze vessel and presented it to the public in 536 BCE. It's called Zichan Xingding, which means Zichan's Law Tripod. Confucius admired him as a member of the old nobility while still having the chivalrous ideals, kindness, and justice. A true gentleman. Then the Battle of Long in 484 BCE, fought by Lu against the invading Qi troops. Ziyo, a birth name Zhanxu, born 522 BCE, and nobody knows when he died, was the victorious military commander for Lu. He thus bought the return ticket for his master, in exile for the last 14 years. Third and last scene entitled Eternity from one hour and 38 minutes to one hour and 42 minutes. This scene happened in 489 BCE at the border of the states of Tsai and Shen, both states south of Wei and Zheng. Confucius and his disciples were lost and almost died of hunger. The tune played on the Guqin is named Gaoshan Liushui, High Mountain and Flowing Waters. Pictured above, the seven-string guqin, one of China's most famous instruments dating back millennia. Though director Hu decided not to dramatize the following, it's another foundational moment in Chinese civilization. It happened in 49 BCE, seven years after the interview between Nanzi and Confucius. In the movie, Zilu is the bearded man lying on the ground, stating he's not hungry, and to whom Confucius fed a mouthful of soup. Now the famous and eternal exchange between them. Zilu asked angrily, Do gentlemen have to bear such dire situations? Master Kong, Yes, gentlemen might have to bear such dire situations. In dire situations, Gentlemen keep their inner joy. Petty men are destabilized. <laughs> That's a great ending. Uh, thank you, Dr. Chuanla, and have a great day. China Rising Radio, Sino Land, and China Tech News Flash signing out. Please make a contribution to all of my hard work. Thank you.